Friday on my Instagram, I have a Q&A session and every single time there is one question. Yulia, which country, city, province, college, university is the best? In this video, I'll share my thoughts on what country, city, university is the best. And if you are an international student, you planning to study abroad, but you can't decide where to go, well, this video was made for you. And let's start with the basics. Choosing where to study can be a very daunting task. With so many options available nowadays, it is very important to do your research. There are actually a few factors that you need to keep in mind when choosing where to study. First of all, cost of study. Second of all, cost of living. Third of all, scholarships, financial aid, job prospectives, language, climate, and much more. It is pretty difficult indeed to say which country is the best, which city is the best, but let's try and find out. So first thing you should be looking at is quality of education. Many countries around the world offer high quality education. For example, Canada, United States, United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand, Switzerland. These countries are known for the top-ranked universities, cutting-edge technologies, and, and high-quality teaching methods. However, the most suitable country for you as an international student will be the country that A aligns with your personal and academic goals, B fits into your budget. For example, you can study in Europe almost for free. Literally, the tuition fees are like two, three, five hundred euros per year when countries like Canada, UK, US, Switzerland, Australia, New Zealand, the prices start at like 10,000 a year and they go up to, I don't know, 100K per year. Excuse me, I have a visitor in here. Again, you can study in Europe almost for free in countries like Germany, Norway, Sweden, Finland, France. But some of you might be, uh, Miss Yulia, those are very cold countries. And you're right. Yes, you cannot study for free in a warm country, my friend. It is worth noting that while education might be free, you still have to pay for accommodation, for your living expenses, for your bus pass, pretty much for everything. <laughs> Are you gonna sit here? I'm sorry guys, I have a baby and the baby cannot be alone. So even though your tuition fees might be low or even free, if you pick Norway, Sweden, the living expenses, even going there is pretty expensive, but living there? Save your money, my friend. And as I've mentioned before, some countries might be super affordable to live in, some countries might be super expensive to live in, but then offer free education. But here's the thing, it might be pricey to live in a certain city, but there might be more jobs and the salaries are gonna be so much higher. For example, Toronto. Living in Toronto is terrible, it's so expensive compared to other cities, for example. But the starting salary for a graduate student is around 60k per year. In Halifax, the cost of living might be so much cheaper and you can find an apartment for 1k, but then your salary is gonna be like 30-40 thousand a year. I think it all comes up to your personal preferences, whether you wanna spend that money first and then get a well-paid job and kind of make that money back or if you prefer to save on your accommodation to save on your housing and then maybe after graduation move to let's say toronto and get a decent salary there if you made it to this point of the video let us know in the comments where are you studying or you planning to study let's connect and help each other out another important factor to consider is scholarships and financial aid some countries like let's say the united states of america they offer fully funded scholarships for example canada does not offer fully funded scholarships i mean they do but it's so much more rare compared to states. So when deciding where to study, you need to determine your budget for education, so tuition fees, for accommodation, and you need to decide how important it is for you to get financial aid. If you have a low budget, maybe it's a better idea to study in Europe and then move to North America. Or maybe you're confident about your academic achievements and you wanna try and apply to some universities in the US and try to get that fully funded scholarship. There are actually several countries that offer fully funded scholarships for undergraduate, which is not the case, for example, for Canada, it is close to impossible to get a fully funded scholarship if you're trying to get your bachelor's degree. However, nothing is impossible. I personally know a person who got a fully funded scholarship at UBC for his bachelor's degree. I mean, if you have strong knowledge and academic excellence, 
you can try. Otherwise, if you have a tight budget, try cheaper countries or try cheaper cities and provinces. For example, countries like Germany offer fully funded scholarships. There is an organization called DAAD DAD, that offers various scholarships even for international students. Norwegian government funds a lot of scholarships for international students, for undergraduate, for postgraduate, for different programs. Also, I've heard that Japan has fully funded scholarships. If you're studying in Japan, let us know if that's true. Again, don't forget that eligibility criteria it varies from country to country, from city to city, university to university. So if, let's say, in Canada they ask in, I don't know, good English, a GPA of 3.0 out of 4.0, in, let's say, Norway, the requirements might be different. Don't forget to research specific requirements for the program, for university, college you're planning to apply for. And let's not forget about cultural and language immersion opportunities because those are very important. Even though you can study in English almost in every single country in the world, the thing is, if the country speaks another language, you'll need to learn another language. For example, Portugal. You can easily study here in English, but if you want to stay, if you want to get your citizenship, precisa de falar português, meu amigo. And don't forget the cultural aspect. For example, if you're moving from Denmark again to Portugal, you will need some time to adjust to the southern mentality. Please keep in mind that too. Another important factor is job perspectives because who wants to spend so much money on education and then not get a job? Nobody. You need to do your research before applying for programs, before choosing a country. You need to check what jobs are in demand in your field, what are the salaries, because if, let's say, you study, you get your degree and then there are no jobs available, the salaries are super low, what are you gonna do? Move to another country? Go back home? Like, what's the point? And if you're planning to work while studying, some countries allow that too. You need to check what's the minimum wage, what are the requirements and limitations. Working while studying might help you cut some expenses like transportation, like books, like pocket money, entertainment. So don't forget about that too. I almost forgot the most important one, immigration pathways. Some countries like Canada are known for easy and fast immigration, except for Quebec. While in other countries, it might take forever to get your residence permit or even citizenship. For example, Switzerland. Even though Swiss education is top notch, they control the immigration so much that it's almost impossible to stay, to work, to get even citizenship. The Swiss government has quotas and they prioritize Swiss citizens and permanent residents for jobs that makes it super hard for an international student to find a job when they come to Switzerland. And let's not forget about languages. Additionally, there are language requirements, high living expenses, which will make it super hard for someone to stay in Switzerland. And speaking of this cold, beautiful country, let's not forget about climate, because climate is... it can be a deal breaker. Trust me, I moved from Canada to Portugal and every December I cry. I have like a major seasonal depression that I don't have snow in this country. I mean, there is technically snow in Serra da Estrela, but you know what I mean. I know there are many students moving from warmer countries to colder countries and then they're like, what is happening? I've never seen snow, I've never experienced this, like what is happening? So it's the other way around. So please don't forget about that because weather, you're like, oh, whatever, like it's winter, it's summer, blah, 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 who cares? But then it's gray outside, it's raining. You cannot study, you cannot do things because you literally like, uh, where is my son? For example, if you move from Portugal to like up north, Sweden, Denmark, Canada again, you'll be like, where is sun? Like, what's happening? If you have any health conditions, it might be important for you to research climate in advance as well. Being comfortable with local climate will make so much difference. It will be so much easier for you to adjust to your new life. Is the climate of your new place of living is kind of similar to what you used to? Or if you're moving from your cold climate to a warm climate? So we've been talking for a while now. Which country is the best to study for international students? Well, some countries like Canada, Australia, US, UK, Switzerland are some of the most popular destinations for international students. 
Unfortunately, there is no one-size-fits-all in the situation. Each country has its strengths, each country has different opportunities for international students. It is very important to do your own research and then decide for yourself which country is the best for you, which one will suit you perfectly. And if you already know where you want to study, but not quite sure if you want to pick college or university, don't forget to watch this video and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!